Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today we're going to be doing something really, really amazing. Right? We're going to be placing this image over this backdrop. And I am very, very excited already how it's going to come out. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. From here, this is not going to be a very long video. So the first thing I need to do is, of course, crop the image with my Instagram styles for, for my Four by five, we are or eight by ten, whatever. Then I'm going to make sure I give him some headroom or some space, yeah, something like that. Turn on my content aware so it just fills up the edges of that border for me. Yeah, once that is done, I'm going to go and repeat the same thing. Okay, this is already in four by five, amazingly. Okay, so the next thing to do is to separate the object from the background. So that we can be able to place in our background, play with the shadows and create some lightning effect. And we are good to go. So I just make a selection of the subject. Once the selection is done, I'm going to go to select inverse. So that I will be able to cut it out. And the background on a separate layer. Of course, you can go to your image to make sure that all your, uh, what is it called? Your selection is intact. Once you are done, make, uh, make a duplicate of the background, right click and go to layer fair cuts. So the essence of this is to have our layer on a separate, to have our background on a separate layer and our subject on a separate layer. The reason I always do this is so that if I need to restore my shadows, I wouldn't have to do that from here. I would just pick it up from a background that doesn't have the image, from a layer that doesn't have the image embedded on it. So now we are ready to bring out our background. I'm just going to unlock the layer so that it can move about and drag it all over and place it over here. Place it perfectly in the middle. So I need that lightning to be just somewhere around here. That light effect behind her to be just somewhere around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my anchor point there. Then scale it in from any other place. Beautiful. So we can still bring it down. This is here, rather here. I scale it for okay. So press enter. Now, if you look closely, you're going to notice this beautiful lightning effect on the background. But because it is not so strong, I'm going to bring it back in and make it look stronger on the image. All right, we'll have it back in. I'm going to right click and go to flip horizontally. Then right click, go to flip vertically. So we'll have it facing downwards. All we need to do is just to scale it wide enough to push it in here. And push it out a little. Yeah, something like that. That will change the blend mode. Remove all the blacks. Uh, this works better. So let me see if it's going to look good outside like this. No, it doesn't look good. So we just have to place it in here, reduce the opacity. And of course, blow it out a little. It's too sharp. Or still need those eye excellence. All right, let's make it slightly bigger. Good. Beautiful. So press enter. Okay, so the next thing to do is to blend this background in. And to do that, I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Change the blend mode to overlay so that my shadows will just be restored back. So if you look at the image, she is now sitting on the floor. Another thing you can do if you feel like, okay, the shadows are not exactly how you want it to be. If you look at the image, it was littered from left top to right. So what we can do is to... Pick up our, uh, what is it called? Our polygonal lasso tool and just make a line down here. And let's pull it from here. I want the shadows to flow this way. So we'll just put a line here. Take it off and uh, push it in here. All right. Then create a course adjustment layer beneath it and darken it down very well, like that. Change the blend mode to multiply. Or rather, we can just leave the blend mode the way it is. Go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur. 
So we just need to blow it out a little. Not entirely. And we need to as well bring it down. Beautiful. So we'll have that shallow cast on the floor. We can even open up our blend dip and just, you know, try to blend it into the floor. Yes, nice room. Beautiful. Beautiful. This can even be changed. Let me show you something else we can do. We can create a light effect over here. I'll blow from here, go this way, and flow back in. Right? They will create a curves adjustment layer. And just brighten that area up. Make it warm. Very important. Add some words. Then change the feather. Just to make it look very, very obvious. We can as well use our um perspective too. I'm just holding control to you know do that to make it look very much wider. I think the feathering is too much. Good. So with this effect now, if we are going to use this effect, it means this shadow we created down here, we are going to need to move it to the front. Let's see how that will work. Okay, so we're back here. Just move it this way. This is right in front of her. And, uh, you know, use our perspective to, to spread it out. Sorry, but then of course, pick up our brush and remove it from here. Should be on the floor only. We are good to go. So look at that lightning effect. So we can as well reduce the effect on the floor. Just slightly dark it out. Look at that effect. Let me show you the overall before and after, the before, the after, the before, the after. So I think this is slightly too light now. We need to make it a bit darker. The another thing we can do is to, of course, create a global color grading. Our color link or gradients, marking, whatever. Mm, this looks really good. But it's not beautiful. Let's look for something beautiful. This is good. Amazing. I love this, but I'm going to bring it down. So I think my. My lightning effect is too strong. This one, I think it's too strong and too wide. So I'm going to close it down a bit. Just enough to see what is that chic line that we're looking for. Okay. And even place this in front. Let's see. You know, Photoshop is all about eating magic. And so just place this here. Ah, okay. that looks off. So we just need to further how we've always been pondering. Okay. Cool. So let's see the way it looks from far. Still looks very distracting. Good. Then we can reduce the opacity. So this was how we started our pink background, brought out our object from our background, separated the two of them, then brought in our background, the one we used, and introduced our, you know, our beautiful color light. I don't know what to call that. Then added our shadow to the floor, then created this beautiful lightning effect from B. So to give it a cinematic feel, I think my color book up is actually off. 
to give it a cinematic feel i'll just go to my puffs and just haze it out a little give it that you know to now effect add some magenta oh yeah some magenta will do the job then of course some reds take the hairs a bit stronger then add a little contrast to it and this is the final result thank you so much for watching make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video if you are interested in getting this background that we use for this image for free all you need to do is just to comment interested in the comment section and you will gain access to our telegram community where we give out these backgrounds for free thank you one more time for watching see you on the next one